We've got a treat for you today. We got the car pro Jerry Reynolds on. Uh, Jerry, how are you today? How's how's Dallas doing? Buddy, doing fine. Doing fine. Is it uh, is it as nice there as it is here? We got we got some mid fifties. Yes, it's perfect rioting weather. Yeah, <laughs> rioting weather. Are y'all having riots out there in Dallas? Well, we did last night. <laughs> the city's still there, right? Yeah, as far as I know. Uh, I'm headed downtown in a minute. I'll, I'll tell you if I don't see it. All right, it sounds good. <laughs> Man, you're you're in a car. I'm excited about because it's it's what I have. Mine's the uh, and I know you're not very happy with the year that I have, which is 2016. But uh, uh, but how how are you feeling about the new models of the uh, of the expedition? You know, since they changed it in 2018, I've been a big fan. Um, they went to the all aluminum body. They went to the 10 speed automatic transmission. Um, a lot of really nice changes. They upgraded the interior some. And chair comfort, I think, was a big deal. Yeah, it was. This this thing, and you know, the other thing that they did, which people don't typically check, but it's something that I do, is turning radius. This is the 2020 Expedition Max, which is the long wheelbase, competes with Suburban and Yukon XL. Uh, and sometimes these things are really hard to drive, and unless they tighten that, that turning radius up, they're hard to park, and they can be very cumbersome. And i got to say, in 2018, one of the best things they did, and they never really touted this, but they really tightened the turning radius on this vehicle. So it is easy to drive in town. It's big, there's no doubt. A lot of room, you know, three rows of seating and a lot of cargo area behind the third row seat but i gotta tell you this thing is nice it's got an eighty four thousand dollar window sticker and this is the top of the line yeah that's the a- platinum edition it's got everything on it and ford has been very aggressive with rebates especially in texas uh there's a lot of incentive on this thing so you can't let that eighty four thousand scare you off if you're looking for a full-size suv not to mention it'll tow 9,000 pounds with a six-cylinder 3.5 EcoBoost. So it's kind of a great all-around vehicle. Now, the question is, what happens now as the 2021 Silverado and Yukon come out, all new additions, uh, you know, brand new, that hadn't been changed in six years. Uh, I haven't gotten one yet that's just starting to, to arrive. Uh, and I, I'm anxious to see how that this one stacks up to the new one. I can tell you how it stacks up to the current model, the 2020, and I'd have to go with the Ford over the Chevy. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, uh, one thing that I hope happens is they lower the price. <laughs> well, the new Chevy's yeah. come out. Well, uh, so one of the things I've noticed is that as far as uh, long-term values, uh, which so in other words, if you're looking for a used vehicle, um, the Fords seem to lose their value faster. But it's it's better for if you're looking for a used version. Uh, they're a little less expensive than the uh, the the Chevy seem to hold their value like crazy. The the Suburbans. Yeah, they do, and the Tahoe and the Escalade. Uh, I mean, the the full size GM SUVs have been extremely popular. Uh, for many, many years. I mean, going back a decade or more. And in 2015, when they changed those, that's when they really started selling extremely well. Now, they've cooled off some the last year, uh, which is why they did a complete redo here out here at the Arlington, Texas assembly plant. But you're absolutely right, Matt, that the resale, if you're looking for a bargain, if you can find a one- or two-year-old expedition, uh, you're going to see a huge drop in price. Yeah, uh, not great if you're buying one brand new, but man, if you're looking for a used, you're in good shape. And, yeah, and I think if you're, oh, you're going to keep a vehicle more than five years, you can't let resale enter right. into the equation. Yeah, you, you just can't. But if you if you're one that trades every two or three years, then I would definitely not buy a new one. Yeah, and one of the things that uh, you I, I think have said in the past, and and you you kind of said it here is if you're looking for an expedition and you're looking used, don't go prior to 2018. You know, it's not that they were bad at all. It's just that they were so improved in 2018. 
they, they were really kind of slow, and the gas mileage wasn't good at all for an SUV uh, prior to 2018. But the going to the 10 speed, going from a big 5.4 V8 down to a 3.5 with more horsepower, and then add the aluminum body. Uh, I think it's worth the money to get the 2018 or newer. No. I do. Okay. Well, um, what do you have going on on carprousa.com? Well, we had several really interesting stories. Everybody, I think, has seen commercials for the GMC pickup tailgate, which is very cool, by the way. They call it uh, a multi-pro tailgate. You know, I've, I've uh, noticed that uh, the tailgate something that a lot of companies have been working on, and they've got some really neat ones out there. They really do. Everybody but Chevrolet. And now we find out that they are going to have the uh, GMC tailgate for 2021 on the Silverado, which is cool. I've got a list of 12 vehicles going away for 2020. Uh, this will be the last year for those. And I've got full coverage of the big Ford Electric F-150 announcement that they made just a, just a few days ago. And so that's, that's kind of interesting. They're building the new 2021 now. We'll see the electric F-150, fully electric, in just a couple of years. So one of the big announcements that I, I know happened over the week was that Tesla came out and they talked about their new batteries. Apparently, the new batteries are going to be able to go over a million miles. In other words, they can be recharged and and they can go that far. Uh, but the other thing that I noticed was uh, one of their, I guess their truck is going to have a 500-mile radius uh, our 500 mile on a full charge and their their new uh, $200,000 sports car that can go over 250 miles an hour um it's it's going to have 650 miles that it can go is is i mean that seems to be a a pretty big jump in what we've seen in the past well wow, that sounds like a game changer <laughs> well it is if they can pull it off right uh, tesla has not produced a vehicle on time and they haven't met any of the claims that they make in advance. So I've learned over time to be skeptical, and I'll believe it when I see it. Same with that announcement. But with 500 uh, miles, you could go from Lubbock to Dallas, and uh, you'd be good, we, even with yeah, an electric. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, versus the 250 miles that they, you know, is the tops today. Right. Uh, but, again, we'll see. I hope they're true. I, there is a market for electric cars. It's not going to be every car it's not for everybody and the range has certainly got to improve and then you got the price issue no that's a I big mean, issue a chevy bolt today which is a little bitty electric vehicle stickers for 40 grand yeah people aren't going to be able to go for that yeah and that sports car is uh, over two hundred thousand uh, dollars it goes up to 250 miles an hour is pretty good but, on an electric car but, though. you know the, the question though jerry uh it, it, you know forty thousand dollars don't you think that the, that's just going to come down and down and down as we continue? You know, it, it will have to if they're going to be successful, because if you look at what you can buy in a gasoline engine car today for forty grand, and you look at a Chevy Bolt, which is a good car, it's a great electric, but not everybody wants to ride around in a car that size, and some people have families and right. some like me. people right. tow things. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. not going to work for everybody, but. But, you know, it could take a, a sizable chunk out of the market. Uh, it could. But, but I wonder, has anyone ever really done a cost analysis to, uh, to find out exactly how much you're saving? Well, uh, let's see. What, what, I, what I'm curious about is how much do, uh, oil do you really save? It, it yeah. is the bottom line. Uh, after you use uh, fuel, uh, hydrocarbons uh, to to power these electric generators. There's a lot of questions we don't have answers for. I mean, seriously, it, it, it's definitely cheaper to drive an electric car, but you got to factor in, you know, the extra cost of the fact that it's an EV. you got to factor your electricity cost in every day. we got to figure out how the infrastructure is going to handle it uh, because it's going to take a lot of charging stations. And then we got to figure out what to do Five years from now, when all those batteries start going bad, yep. where are we going to put them? Yeah. All right. Well, Jerry, we, we're out of time, but uh, thank you again for coming on. 
Uh, want to ch- make sure everyone knows, check out carprousa.com. That's where uh, the, all of the things we've talked about today will be. And uh, the the Ford Expedition, uh, the new Ford Expedition, will be on there on Monday. Correct. All right. And don't forget to check us out uh, or check Jerry out on Saturday from 11 to 1 on News Talk 95.1 FM, 790 AM KFYO right here. Thanks, Thanks Jerry. Guys. Have a good day. All right. We'll be right back.